Mr. Nick. Mr. Nick, he's our pig. It's Mr. Nick. Yay! Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Mr. Nick Show. I'm your host, Mr. Nick. Today, we're continuing our Animals of the World series. And we're going to be talking about animals of the Sonoran Desert, which is in the southwestern part of the United States. That's where I live. So it's cool because I've actually seen a lot of these in person. But first, let me introduce you to my co-host and my friend, Allie. Hey, Allie, how are you? Fantastic. How so, are you? Oh, I'm doing really well. I'm excited for this one today because this is the first episode where we've been talking about all these animals from all around the world where I've actually seen some of these animals myself in the wild. Now, I've seen some of those other animals that we've talked about in the zoo, but never in the wild. Today, we're gonna to talk about animals that I've actually seen, and I can't wait to share them with the people at home. You guys ready? Yeah. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's take a look at our first animal, which is a javelina. A javelina is kind of like a pig, right? Pig-like animal, and they don't have very good eyesight, which is interesting because they come out as it starts to get dark at night to so the early morning, so I guess they don't really need great eyesight if it's dark anyways. So they use, their, uh, they use their nose and they do a lot of smelling to find their food. And it's been said that they really won't mess with uh, people, but don't come between them and their babies. Because if you do, they have been known to put up a good fight for their babies, which means they're good parents, I guess, right? Yeah, that's a javelin. I've seen those before in person, by the way. And yeah, I did not get up close to it. No, because it was a whole, they travel together, the family and everything. Stay away, let them do their thing. Were they all big or were there any like cute little babies? You know, it's interesting. I think the big ones are not that cute, but the babies, like every other baby animal, they're pretty darn cute. Yes, they did have little ones with them too. So stay away from the babies because the adults won't like it. All right, next, let's take a look at a coyote. All right, a coyote is smaller than a wolf. They're about 40 pounds at full, full size. And the baby coyotes, and they live in packs, like the families together, the babies, they don't even open their eyes all the way for 10 days. They must be really sleepy. Huh. Yeah, sleepy. They're just starting to figure out what's going on, right? And they don't even walk for the first 20 days. You remember when we were talking about some of the other animals in our other episodes, like, like the caribou? They walk within like three hours of being born. These guys don't walk for almost three weeks. I've seen coyotes in person. And they're not gonna mess with people very much. They're more scared of us than uh, you know we are of them. But one time it was kind of cute. I was on a hike and you could hear this little baby coyote. He was like whining and howling. And then you could see the parents walk up to where he was at and made sure he was okay. And then, then they went back out and kept doing what they were doing. But it was like, mom. Mom! And you can see them walk up to where he was. It was so cute. They're like, what's going on, buddy? You okay? Okay, we're gonna go back out. Coyotes, pretty cute. So a coyote is kind of in the dog family. Let's talk about an animal that's in the cat family. A mountain lion, also known as a cougar and a puma, okay? Now, mountain lions, they're pretty fast. They can run up to 40 to 50 miles per hour. That's fast, very fast. It looks very big and strong. Yeah, yeah, they're pretty big and definitely uh, no joke to mess with. They're pretty strong. Now, did you know that a baby mountain lion can sometimes choose to stay with its mommy for up to two years? A lot of animals, like after the first nine months to a year, they kind of go on their own, but the baby mountain lion can stay with mom for two years. And so if you have a cat at home, Cats purr, they meow, they make noises, right? Does your cat roar? No, your cat at home doesn't roar. Did you know that a mountain lion doesn't roar either? What? Yeah, lions That's and tigers. They... <laughs> roar! <laughs> That's right, you should teach them. I have not seen a mountain lion in person, but I know people who have. And um, yeah, it's, they're, they're a pretty cool looking cat, but yeah, it's interesting. A cat like that, that size cannot roar. That's, that's weird to me, but kind of a cool fact. 
Next, let's look at a Gila monster. That's a pretty scary sounding name, right? Yeah. It's a lizard, a very big, thick lizard, as you can see. Now he does have venom or poison. So if he bites, there's poison in there. He can, yeah. They're not too dangerous to humans. And it's actually thought that they don't really use the poison so much to get their food, but maybe as defense to fight off other animals. So only if they're kind of like mad if someone's getting them? Yeah, like if I was trying to attack the Gila monster, he could bite me and I might go, ooh, how that's, I'm gonna leave you alone. So that's what they use their venom for. They're not very fast like most lizards, so they sneak up on the animals that they want to eat. So if you're sneaking up on it, you probably don't need much venom anyway, you already got it. So yeah, that's a Gila monster. Despite its scary sounding name, I think it's probably not that bad of an animal, really. It's, I think it's getting a bad reputation with that name. All right, speaking of reptiles with poisonous bites, let's take a look at a rattlesnake. Oh no. I know you're not a fan of snakes. Mm -mm. Yeah, so that's a rattlesnake, and there's 36 different kinds of rattlesnakes. Yeah, that's that's pretty big. They can be up to like five feet long. No. Yeah, yep. And you know, rattlesnakes, they don't have hands, obviously, so it's hard to feel, you know, what they're maybe looking for to eat, but did you know that they have a heat-sensing organ in their face? that can detect where animals are by feeling heat because we all give off body heat. So it can sense heat and that's how they help find them what they want to eat. I didn't know that. Yeah. I just thought maybe they use their tongue. Yeah, they do use their tongue to smell. You're right, absolutely. But they also use a heat sensing organ in their face. And kids, I mean, if you don't know, a rattlesnake is called a rattlesnake because it has a rattle on its tail that's it shakes if it wants to let you know, hey buddy, you're a little too close, you might want to back up. And it makes that sound like a rattle. You hear that? Get the heck out. I have seen a rattlesnake in person, and um, yeah, not one you ever really want to be caught off guard by, that's for sure. Okay, next, let's take a look at an animal that's a little more cuter than one of these Gila monsters or rattlesnakes. How about a jackrabbit? Aw, I love rabbits. Yeah, so this here, they can vary in size. These guys can be, you know, kind of cute looking little guys. They could also be pretty darn big. They can go 30 miles per hour. That's so fast. fast. Mm -hmm, that's fast. And they can also jump up to 10 feet, just like that snowshoe hair we talked about in the Arctic animals episode, 10 feet in one jump. That's amazing. Yeah, they are, that's, that's, that is amazing. I've seen a bunch of these guys around and uh, the little ones are pretty cute, like little cottontail guys, that's what they look like. Yeah, and I've seen some other ones that live near the mountains that are huge, 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 huge. But overall, I think they're pretty neat animals. All right, next, let's take a look at a bobcat. I think the bobcats are kind of cute. I don't know, I think maybe because they're not as big, they look less scary, but they are very good hunters. They're very sneaky. Mm -hmm. Now a bobcat from head to tail is about three feet long. Now that's head to tail, including the tail. That's not that big. So like a little bigger than a cat in the house? From head to tail, yeah. I'd say, I'd say a cat in the house, including the tail. Yeah, they're bigger than that. And they're only about 15 inches tall. That's not that tall. So maybe that's why I think they look a little cuter than those typical, you know, big ferocious animals, the cats we've been looking at. But they are very good hunters. They're very sneaky. And um, I have not seen one of these in person, but I know people who have seen them out in the wild, kind of near houses and stuff. And yeah, as long as you're, uh, you're not messing with them, I don't think they'll mess with you. That's a bobcat. Okay, let's take a look at an animal I think everybody knows about, but maybe don't realize there are actually wild ones out there. Horses. What? Yeah, so did you know that there are actually wild horses? Yeah, horses generally, like they live in stables or barns, they're owned by people or ranchers or private owners, right? But there are actually about 500 wild horses that still live in Arizona. They have no owner, they're not branded, 
They are so, wild horses. Do they have to find their own like food and water and places to sleep? Absolutely, yeah. Thankfully where they live, there's probably lots of options for food because they, they eat you know, plants and grass and stuff like that. But yeah, they just roam free. No owners, no stables, nothing. There are actually wild horses in the United States Southwest. That's pretty interesting. Wow, I didn't know that. All right, you know what we haven't talked about yet? No. Any kind of birds. Oh. There are quite a few really big, interesting birds living in the Sonoran Desert. And one of them is the Great Horned Owl. The Great Horned Owl is the largest owl in the Sonoran Desert. It is up to two feet tall. Now let's think about that, guys. A bobcat, I said, was about that tall, okay? The Great Horned Owl is about that tall. Much wow. taller, almost nine inches taller than a bobcat. That's big. And they cannot move their eyes. So they can turn their head up to 270 degrees, which is like looking all the way back here and looking all the way back there. That's really, kind of really silly. Easy. But if you can't turn your eyes side to side, then you have to be able to turn your head really far. And they have extra bones in their neck to make it so they can turn their head way further than us regular people can. All right, let's talk about an animal here that it's kind of odd looking actually. It's called a ringtail. Aw, I think it's kind of cute. It's kind of cute, it looks like a lemur, huh? But it's part of the raccoon family and it's an amazing climber, very, very good climber. And its back feet can rotate a full 180 degrees, the opposite direction to help it climb down objects just as well as it can climb up, so. That's helpful. Yeah, really good climber. It's the state mammal of Arizona, so that shows you, I mean, there's quite a few of them, I guess, in the state of Arizona. But it's kind of cute, it has a ringed tail, like its name, a ringed tail little beady eyes. Yeah, I don't know, it's, it's a different kind of animal, but I think it's kind of cute. All right, we are down to our last animal. And how could you talk about the Southwest? We already talked about coyotes without mentioning a roadrunner, right? The roadrunner and the coyote, the cartoon. All right, I see roadrunners all the time and they are a lot bigger than most birds, but not nearly as big as the cartoon makes them look like. Right, let's see the pictures here. From beak to tail, they're about two feet. So that's, that's a pretty good size for a bird. And they are, uh, you know, the cartoon makes them look like they're like the victim all the time. They will eat a lot. Really? They will eat smaller birds, they will eat rattlesnakes, they will eat other lizards, they will eat, they'll eat just about anything. These guys, they mean business, which is probably, I mean, why they're so big, right? Are they fast they, like the cartoon? They are, they can run up to 20 miles per hour. That's pretty fast for a bird, right? And I've seen them fly, but mostly they walk and they run all over the place. So yeah, Roadrunner, definitely something you see when you're in the Southwest. All right, everybody, I hope you had a great time today learning about a lot of the animals that live where I live. A lot of animals that I've actually seen before in real life, not a zoo or on the internet. Real life, I've seen these guys. So I hope you enjoyed learning about them. And now it's time for the joke of the day. Okay, Allie, are you ready? Yes. What is a snake's favorite subject in school? History. <laughs> like that. All right, guys, we hope you like this episode. Watch all the other episodes we've been doing about animals from all around the world. Like the episode if you want. Subscribe to the page so that way you can see everything that we're doing. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Mr. Nick, Mr. Nick, he's our pig. It's Mr. Nick. Yay.